Did he expect like anything in return or he was just like, here's I'm, some money. I'm rich. No, I never saw him again. And your wardrobe screams fatherless. We have more trust Honestly, than that top zipping kind of people. Disgusting. How was your relationship with your father? Nice. Just saying, why did you get the attention you wanted? You need Jesus. That's offensive. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to That's Offensive with your host, Daddy Deals, or what is the deals, or Adelia, or however the fuck you know me. We have someone with also a few alter egos, DGAF Bella, Boycott Fathers. That's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, I had to throw that spicy one in there because I was like, how do I want people to know me? That you boycott That's, all fathers. Yeah. Artificial semination <laughs> is that like the vibe That's you're going real, for? That's my dream. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. And you want to be a mom then? I want to be a mom. Okay. I'm what? really excited to be a mom. Oh. Mm -hmm. I can't relate. We'll work on it. I mean, I, I won't we'll have work kids. On it? Well, not us, but like you know, just me liking my friends' kids. I mean, we'll work on that aspect. Right. Yeah. I, I, I can see how people don't like kids. I, however, love them. But yeah, <laughs> I see. I see where you're going with that. So tell me about your childhood off the bat. Um, I don't even know if I really had one, to be honest. Like, so yeah, I can't. Nothing comes to mind when I think of my childhood. Did you have any fun? Did you ever go to like Disneyland because you grew up in LA? Like. Um, while I grew up kind of like all around because my parents were in the military. Oh, okay. So we settled down in California when I was 13. Uh-huh. So like before then, it was kind of a lot of mumble jumble moving, whatever. So, um, that's why I think I have such a hard time in LA, honestly, is because I was moving around so much when I was little, I wasn't able to like establish roots or anything. Yeah. yeah, in LA is just a bunch of people like <laughs> trying to drag you in every which way to be who oh, they gosh. want you to be. <laughs> Don't we know it? But other than that, my childhood was basically just like taking care of my brothers and mm -hmm. just being like a family girl. Yeah. So like when you took care of your brothers growing up, did you feel like you had to mature early? earlier than like other people had to definitely I feel like for a long time I didn't feel that way it wasn't until I started going to therapy <laughs> that she told me this term parentification uh-huh if you're aware of it and I'm not because I never did that oh right <laughs> I thought everyone did that is the yeah so um basically that's when you kind of step in as the parent um, and so that's kind of the role I had to play because, you know, my parents got divorced when I was 13. So it was just a lot of me taking care of them and stuff. You know? Yeah. Did you like take care of your brothers? Cause your mom had to like work and stuff. So like basically you were running the house while she was like making money. I'll just give you the short answer. Yes. yes. I would just do that. <laughs> I would babysit them for a few hours a day, but it was really fun because my little brother were like really close. So mm -hmm. I watched him like grow up and like, yeah. it was such a cute experience. Do you see like a little bit of yourself in him where you're like, oh, that's such a Bella thing to do. No, he is such a little firecracker. Oh. <laughs> He's honest, my, my inspiration, because he knows so much about himself at such a yeah. little age, and I feel like I still don't know anything about mm -hmm. myself, and I'm, you know, 22. So he's like, oh, I wish I was him. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing anything to try to, like, explore different parts of yourself? Like, how yeah. are you discovering? I started to go to therapy, and she recommended a few things. So right now I've been just trying a bunch of hobbies, so, like, painting, bowling, I really want to get into ice skating. Like, I'm basically trying all the passions that, like, I dreamed of when I was little. Yeah. Um, and it makes me feel so much better. It's, like, literally heal healing my inner child. It's so nice. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. is really fun. I feel like I should start doing some of that you when should. I, like, have energy and stuff no, like that. No, you totally should. It's so <laughs> therapeutic. Uh-huh. And it's, like, I just always try to let myself be my own kid in that moment and I'm like what was I thinking when I wanted to be an ice skater when I was little I was thinking this this, and this and I just like allow myself to think it and it literally just feels like I'm like putting a huge band-aid on it and it's like all better so it's really yeah. great you should try it have you ever like taken do you I, you don't really take mushrooms right no. no I've never taken mushrooms okay I was gonna ask like have you ever been able to talk to your inner child but oh um, that's my a God. big psychedelic thing you can do that? I, I've been able to, yeah. 
um, I was like having a trip where, um, and it was like a guided spiritual trip, but um, in this trip, it's like your brain, at f for the first like hour, you're kind of like, I feel like I'm not thinking about any of the things I'm supposed to be thinking about. And then after an hour, my brain starts, like I was able to connect with my inner child and it was like a little Adelia in a fucking corner. I was like, what are you doing over there? And she was like, you're always so mean to me. And I'm like, but don't I deserve it sometimes? And she's like, no. <laughs> so I was able to be like, all right, mental note, I need to start being nicer to myself, but it's so hard. Oh my God, <laughs> that is such a beautiful experience. You're kind of pitching me on shrimps right now. Yeah. <laughs> like that is so fun. I Every time not. I've gone out with Bella, I'm like, do you want a little chocolate? Like, are you sure? You do. You always offer it to me and I always say no, just because I'm a little scaredy cat. I honestly considered it for a while, <laughs> some, some sort of drugs, but then I was like, I just am not that interested. Yeah, because you partied a lot when you were like younger and when you do that, it's like when you're older, I mean... It didn't actually work out for me. I've been partying since I was like 13, 14-ish. But um, I have oh never grown out of that phase until I was forced to with this. But um, Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what an interesting <laughs> sentence. When you were 13 and 14? 13, it wasn't. It was like I didn't know I was drinking alcohol, if that made sense. I was like making drinks that were like made for me by like parents with parental like supervision kind of thing. <gasps> Okay. And then when I was like 14, I was like, you know, in high school. And then I started getting invited to parties. And I was like, and I finally went to one. It's so my parents breathalyzed me at the end of the night. And I drank two beers. And then I tried to, what did I, I think I drank mouthwash. Like actually drank it to try to, <laughs> I don't know if I passed or not. My parents were like, all right, you can go to bed. But I'm pretty sure I failed. <laughs> gosh, what? Your life is crazy. I need to interview you. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I am so interested. Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of. So you graduated super early. Like, how are you able to graduate? Like, were you homeschooled? Is that how you graduated early? Because, yeah, I took this thing called the Chesapeake, which is the California High School Profici Proficiency Exam. Uh huh. And it's basically where um, they change it a little bit now, but you basically take two tests. It's like a math test and an English test. Um, and you're able to test out of high school um it's for, made for like actors and actresses so that okay. they can focus on work were you acting back then no okay you just mm -hmm. did it to like graduate early okay. yeah I just basically my mom was like this because I was already taking college classes you were able to take a few units in high school with the principal's permission uh -huh. So I was taking college classes at the time and it just seemed fitting because everything I was learning in college, I was learning in high school. So my mom was like, why don't you just go to college and learn it and remember it? And I was like, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Graduated early. So what did you do with those like two years you graduated early? Oh my gosh. I did a lot of partying. <laughs> like, my goal for that time was to really kind of like focus on college and stuff, but it seemed like I was meeting these really great people. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was doing a lot of things with them. So I partied so much when I was younger. I like topped myself out so early. And you were like actually in LA at this time. So you're able to kind of like mm -hmm. speak on the LA experience. So like to preface, let's talk about how toxic like the LA party life is. And like just it's kind of predatory when you're like a young girl living here at a young age. So, yeah. like, explain your experience because I know mine. Yeah. So, it's extremely predatory. Um, and it's it's such an amazing city. I got to experience amazing things mm -hmm. um, at such a little age. But I also was put into a lot of uncomfortable positions. And when you're, you know, a girl in L.A., you are basically bound to, like, be in one of those situations because that's just the way the punches roll here. So yeah. that's kind of how it like started yeah. um, my partying experience. But then I was able to meet this girl who is 27. Our code name? <laughs> Our code name Samantha. Samantha? Okay. Samantha. So Samantha and I met and that's really when my life 
kind of like took off. I feel like that's kind of where my life started because she uh-huh. opened a lot Did of doors. She, was she the one to bring you to the clubs or were you clubbing before her? I was clubbing a little bit before her, but nothing like what yeah. I was doing with her. How old were you when you started going to the clubs and did the bouncers ever even check if you were 18 or not? So I was 17 when I first started going to the clubs mm-hmm. and um I remember one of my first times ever was a guy, like my promoter, gave the bouncer a credit, gave me his credit card, and then said, "Go show to the, to the bouncer," because I didn't have a license. <laughs> and I showed it to him, and he was like, "Who gave you this?" And I was like, "So and so," and he was like, "All right, you're in." And so that's as easy as it was. But I was 17. Yeah, so I started crazy. going when I was 17 too, and I had like. They would give me, like, they basically, like, the uh, bouncers would take girls' IDs who, like, weren't part of the, who weren't, like, with any promoters or anything. Mm -hmm. So then they'd give them the, sell them to the promoters, and the promoters would give them to us to, like, get us in. And not once did the promoters ever ask if I was, like, 18, or they would, like, I remember one said, like, just tell me you're 18. Some, like... Isn't, so they know in their head, like, and why are they bringing young girls to, like, these table sections like young ass girls and like do you think the people who are buying the tables know how young the girls are 1000 percent um it is a very clubs are very scary to me (laughs) um because of that like a lot of the guys will be like 25 plus some even like 40 who are getting you into these parties knowing damn well you are not even 18 you know yeah so it definitely happens a lot yeah and men be as for honestly this is like a good thing for men to ask ask for her id like her actual id before you have sex with a girl that you meet at a club because i know when i was 17 i was like this is probably bad but i was for sure lying about my age to hook up with guys i thought were hot to hook up with them like to have yeah (laughs) Is that bad? Whoa. It's okay. They I don't know. I wasn't doing that, but yeah. I know. <laughs> I can see why you would do that. I would lie about my age if I wanted to, like, hang out with them. But Yeah, because I, I, was, gonna... I was graduated from high school already. It's just I was still 17 to, like, preface it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I Well, I could see how you lie. I lied about my age a lot. Yeah. I was 17, so. <laughs> gotcha. That might, actually, that might be kind of bad. I'm sorry, guys. I'll never tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was a little hoe back then. <laughs> So your friend, Samantha, Uh how did you like meet her? How did your friendship start with her? Like, what did you guys, what did you guys do together? So we met through a mutual friend and um, we were kind of like in this little trio at one point Mm -hmm. um, with another girl and they kind of like paved the way for me a lot because they would take me to these really spectacular parties with like very important people. Yeah. And so that was, I think, the most appealing thing about her friendship, even though she was really mean to me. Uh-huh. And I still like took it for some reason. Um, she really opened a lot of doors for me and I would not be where I am without her. Yeah. So it's like a catch-22 kind of. Um, what was the age difference? <laughs> Oh, she was 27 and I was 17, which it sounds even, it sounds so much worse now that I know how yeah. crazy that is. Yeah. Cause she, like any, like, I mean, you're 22. Would you be friends with a 17 year old unless like no. it was your family? No. Even <laughs> when I go to like club nineties and like I meet girls who are 20, I'm like, girl but no 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 I'm sorry I love you but like I can <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> that friendship if you can't even legally drink like it's over uh-huh. you know and there's just so much to learn <laughs> there's so much that I try to tell young girls now um but they don't believe me they will though but I try to like do my best to like inform them you know this is how it might be like just be careful you know yeah so I try to I try to do do my part yeah Yeah. I know be careful yeah so what was the dynamic between you and this friend like it was very weird looking back we were like best friends but like Mm -hmm. I said she was very mean to me she would put me in a lot of uncomfortable positions she would basically say she promised a lot of men that I would sleep with them and I was a virgin Wait, you were a virgin at 17? I was a virgin at 17. 
Oh, wow. I hadn't even met my first boyfriend yet. Yeah. And she was telling men that I would sleep with them for Coachella tickets, EDC tickets, um, any places that we want, we would want to go, Mm -hmm. um, or anybody who had, who would have connections. She would place me first in the position, in the situation. She would make me feel it out. And she would be like, you have to get me into these places. So she kind of had like the, the spark, the connect maybe. Yeah. But I was the one who got us in. Do you think that she used you because you're like drop dead gorgeous and you know, she might not, she might not have her looks to get her in. Is that something mean to ask? But, um, I, I mean, why else would she use you? That I think that may have been her MO <laughs> um, because she would always say it. She was kind of like jealous of me too. I think that's why she was mean to me is that she would just constantly be like, oh, you're so skinny. But then like would be working out literally like two hours a day. So it was kind yeah. of like projection and it was just like a really weird Oh, like really saying you're thing. skinny in a bad way? Or, uh-huh. oh, I was like, if someone said I was skinny, no. I'd be <laughs> jumping up and down. No, she would be, oh, wow. she would just yeah. like be mean to me. And oh I like took it because she was opening a lot of doors for me. Yeah, so when she would promise these men that like he would sleep with them, did like, was it ever like you were in a very, very uncomfortable situation because these men like would be all over you because they thought you guys were going to have sex because she told them like what, what situations did you get in? Oh, it, it's been so, so many. One time, um, she said that I didn't know this at the time, but we were in an Uber and I met this guy at a Coachella after party <laughs> and plot twist. He is like this really wealthy guy insanely Mm -hmm. wealthy and he's dating this like really problematic influencer and so I see them on my for you page sometimes and I'm like oh my god that guy is crazy because we were in the uber we go from LA to Palm Springs Mm -hmm. um actually no we went to Newport Beach that time so we were in Newport Beach and he had this like mansion whatever and he was like I can take you on my private jet and I was like sure right yeah but what I didn't know was that like before that he was gonna pull me into a room and he was like literally on top of me and I was like I'm 17 I'm 17 please don't do this please don't do this and eventually he got off of me and then eventually so it wasn't when you said you were 17 oh my god no it literally took me I mean it wasn't that long it was probably like a minute and a half but I was like, he was like full on me, like with all his strength. And I was like pushing him off. And I was like, I'm 17, I'm 17. Like, no, please don't. And then after like 30 seconds, he was like really drunk. After like 30 seconds, he got off of me and then he got really mad at me. And then he was like, you need to leave. But then <laughs> what I did was I went outside and um, I tried to find the owner and I talked to him and I was like, really- the owner of Coachella? Oh my god! No, I wish. Oh, okay. no, the owner of that house. He was like oh, a friend a house. of that, okay. that person's house. And I went to him, and I was like, "Hey!" And I really tried to buddy up with him. And then the guy like came down, stormed down, and he was like, "You need to leave." And then the owner was like, "She's not going anywhere." <laughs> and I was like, yeah. But yeah, so there were numerous situations like that. Oh. Way worse ones, even. So. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm so sorry. It's okay. I mean, it wasn't anything that I can't I couldn't get past. I I I've moved past that. I've yeah. forgiven who I need to forgive in and I feel like I'm at a much better place now, but yeah, do you think like having that happen at such a young age like has affected your relationship with men? Yeah, I think, you know, I've been talking to my friends about it a little bit more because I've been going to therapy. I talk about my dynamics with men that I always thought were normal. Yeah. But apparently it's not normal. So I think, you know, looking back since I was like 16, probably, Mm -hmm. I've just been around a lot of men who were very comfortable taking advantage of me in in not just, you know, one way, but in numerous ways, whatever they could get. So I think I've definitely kind of, I have a very big shield now. Yeah, just like a huge distrust. Like, 
I remember we bonded at first because you're like, I love being mean to men. And I was like, girl. I girl just thing. like, I, I just, I just give them what they give me. So if they're yeah. going to be disrespectful to me, I'm definitely going to be disrespectful back, you know? Yeah. So it's fun. <laughs> it really is. What's that one story of like, what was it? Like what someone you- was in a door or something or like asked you to keep the door open? Like, oh my God, there was, the- it was a crazy party. <laughs> you were so angry. Oh, I was so angry. Um, I went to this party and um, I knew nobody there. It was all, I, I thought it was going to be people my age, but I've always been at parties where there's older people. So I was uh-huh. really excited to be around like people my age, but it ended up being another one of those yeah. with a lot of men. So it uh-huh. was like, I think it was some sort of like tech party. So I was standing outside and someone opened the back door and I was like standing right by it. And then the owner of the house, I guess, um, was like, okay, um, I'm going to need you to make sure this door stays closed. And I was like, I know he didn't just say that to me um, (laughs) because that's not the way you're going to talk to me, especially when, who do, I'm your guest. Like, no, bitch. So I literally was like, no. And he was like, oh, come on, come on. And I was like, no, like I'll close it if I'm leaving, but I'm not going to like stand here and make sure it stays closed. Yeah. And that entire party was filled with a lot of men who, when I told them I did OnlyFans, they like literally would get so mean with me. And they were like, you don't deserve respect. And I'm like, excuse let's me. Let's look at our bank accounts. <laughs> yeah. Let's look. I don't even talk about respect. I'm making dollars. And men like that don't deserve respect. That's why there's the Drews of the world. But neither of us, I feel like, have the Drew Afuelo. You know, Drew, she's the girl who makes fun of balding men on TikTok. Love her. Love Love her. her. (laughs) But I don't think either of us have, like, that meanness or that feistiness unless, like, I'm really drunk. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, I'm getting better at it. You're Um, getting better? (laughs) I've been training. You can teach me a little class. We can do, like, an improv, like... (laughs) Oh my God, we should. Me. <laughs> I've been working through sessions right now. I'm really trying to um, not move when men are walking towards you, not moving. It's really hard. Yeah. Really hard. If they move, then I'll move uh-huh. because I'm like, they're making effort. I'm making effort. But yeah. a lot of times you just see them and they're just like doing their own thing and they don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to let that happen. So. Oh, of course not. <laughs> um. So back... <laughs> Back to the, like, Samantha, Samantha situation. How, like, how were old men, like, funding your life back then? Was it just, like, festival tickets? Were they, like, paying for you to go to parties? Like, what was that dynamic like? Um, so the, one of the first times that it ever happened was mm-hmm. I was, um, we went to Malibu for dinner, and we were meeting up with these two men who I'd never heard of, which mm-hmm. was usual, and we go to dinner with them, and while we're at the dinner table, the man next to me just literally slides me $400. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I didn't know what he was doing, so I was like, oh, are you trying to show me your money, you know? I was like 17. I'm like, yeah. eh. And he was like, it's for you. And I was like, okay, sure. Did he expect like anything in return or he was just like, here's I'm, some money. I'm rich. No, I never saw him again. And th- okay. There's a lot of liars. I've been in a lot of situations. There's a lot of liars on TikTok. There's going to be a lot of girls who are like, I do nothing for the bucks I make. And I'm like, girl, we all know damn well. Right. Yeah. But when I was little, they would be doing this. They would because of her, she would be the one who would be the st- big bitch and she'd be like pay her now and one oh time God. yeah now that you like say um the whole grooming thing she actually told me one time that she could find me a sugar daddy but she would take a cut and she would get herself an apartment with my allowance oh my god yeah so i, I when you were originally telling me all of this i was like this kind of like sounds like grooming and wait I wrote down the definition of it because someone was like okay here it is um so 
because someone was like, I don't think it's grooming, but I looked up the definition because I'm like, this sounds like grooming to me. So the definition of it is when someone builds a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child or a person so they can manipulate, exploit, and abuse them. And it sounds like Amanda was doing that to you. So like, now that I've kind of put that in your head, like, does that bring up any emotions? Do you feel any certain way towards... Uh, the situation, or sorry, Samantha, the other code name we wrote down was Amanda, neither is her real name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> neither is her real name. Amanda, Samantha. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely, based on that definition, she was very, like, she exploited me a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I look at her differently. She's actually tried to reach out to me um, right when I started OnlyFans, I think she kind of saw like the path I was going on and she wanted to jump on that. Yeah, probably take yeah. a cut or mm -hmm. something. And so, but I like kindly shut her down mm -hmm. and she hasn't messaged me since. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think I'm just going to leave it that way. I'm like, my whole thing with her now is that like, I will never go back to that situation because uh -huh. that was like the darkest yet happiest like time of my life I think that's why it like affected me so much because it was like I did so much for the good but I also like we're tra traumatized by like yeah the whole situation oh my gosh it's crazy that and like the fact that the men knew you were like underage and like it didn't really stop because like I mean, at least the men who I have met at like sleazy bars if I'm like yo I'm 17 they'd be like oh I'm out dude <laughs> like, that's you know why? Why? Because these are really powerful men. So it wouldn't affect so them. That's that's not a concern for them because okay. and that's why I got in so many of those situations is because like you get to experience so much of the good. Yeah. But then you get to experience the people who made that. And mm -hmm. those people are really scary. Yeah. So like you, you couldn't get them in trouble if you tried. No. Um, did you ever feel it was, like, weird at that time that, like, a 27-year-old girl was, like, friends with you, a 17-year-old? Like, did that ever cross your mind? Like, why, why isn't she hanging out with people her own age? Well, I didn't really tell my mom, and I think that was, like, the biggest thing is that, like, she didn't know this was, like, going on, so I didn't yeah. have anyone telling me. Um, I did have, like, one person tell me, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really hanging around other than the people – that she was hanging around. So it was like, I didn't have any, no one with good intentions was around me to tell me, like, this isn't right. They just wanted their, whatever they wanted, you know? Yeah, because, like, they probably saw you and you're so pretty and they're like, oh, you know what? I can get a paycheck out of this. Yeah. And, I mean, so Amanda said that thing with, like, the sugar daddy. Was she taking a cut of what men were paying you guys for? Like, how, like what was her benefit? Her benefit was making me get the actual, like, items. So, like, if she wanted a Coachella ticket, I would get her the Coachella ticket or the EDC ticket. Or I would yeah. get her into this place. Uh -huh. So, I would get the payment. Yeah. She would just make me get her in. Interesting. Well, did you at least have like fun at the festivals? Like, do you have any like fun, crazy stories of like when you were there that's like not here? Oh my God, I'm trying to think. Literally, I had some of the best times mm -hmm. um, with her too. And let me try and think. Oh, frick, I should have like thought of one before. <laughs> it, there was so much bad, I like wasn't even thinking about like what good I would talk about with her. Uh -huh. um, well, was she the friend you mentioned, like, you would make out with a friend and, like, make guys watch or something? Was that her or was that someone else? No, that was my own devious mind. I, I thought of that okay. one. I tell tell to, the story. I had this best friend for a long time. And um, when we were, like, maybe, like, 17, 18, pro probably, like, 18, we would go to parties with kids our own age this time. Okay, were you not friends with the Samantha girl anymore at this point? I wasn't friends with her anymore. Oh, okay. Should we go over the falling out with her first then and then go into, like, this craziness sure. after? Like, how did yeah. you guys fall out? So we went to a party together, and I didn't – the night before, I didn't get her whatever she wanted that night. So she was already really on edge with me, and she was like, we have this party we have to attend. Mm -hmm. um, he, this guy is going to be your date. This guy was, like, coked out of his mind. Like, yeah. literally crazy. And I was like, oh, no. But we were 
supposed to be going to this super elite party, so I really wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So he takes me out, he takes me shopping, and while we're on the road, it's going crazy, and I'm like freaked out. So I go to Samantha, and I'm like, um, something's not right with this, I want to go home. And she was like, you can't go home. And so I was like, I didn't have the money at that time, and so I was like, I'm stuck here. And so I go in the bathroom, she starts talking shit about me, and I'm like over it. I'm like, mm -hmm. what the heck? So I come out and I'm like, you know I can hear you guys? This is the first time I like ever really stood up to her. I was like, you know yeah. I can hear you guys. And she was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, why are you talking about me like that? Like I have every right. Like I'm literally going to go home. I'm the reason you guys are even getting in. So if yeah. I leave, you guys won't get in. So do you want to keep talking shit? And then Samantha was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Seriously, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't want you to go, right? So then we go to the but party. It, probably just because she wanted to get in. Huh? Exactly. Because um, I was like really going to find a way to leave. I was like going to call my mom or something. Yeah. Um, and Did your so, mom know you were partying at all? Or did she just she, think you were like... She knew I was partying, but she didn't know like who I was partying with. Okay, got it. Um, and then... So we go to the party and then um, he's being so crazy to me yeah. that I'm getting like scared out of my mind. So I'm like, I'm leaving, like I gotta go. So she's like, I'll take you, I'll take you. And like, she never took me. So I was like, this is weird. Like take so, you home, like drive take you me home? home, drive me okay. home. Okay. So she's like driving me, we're up in the hills and my phone was about to die. And I was like, oh shoot, can I use your charger? And she didn't have a charger. And I literally had, I probably had like 5% at that time. Uh-huh. Um, and then she was like, Bella, you need to get out of the car. And I was like, what? And she's like, you need to get out of the car. And so I got out of the car. Oh my God. And I was on the street. And it was in a very nice neighborhood, so it was okay. Yeah. But I was over here like bawling my eyes out because it's like 2 a.m. Uh-huh. And... Finally, someone rescued me, but... Was it, like, a random person, or, like... It was someone I knew. Okay, thank you. Um, they rescued me. <laughs> like, Bella, don't get in random people's cars. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, the next day, um, blocked me on everything. And she then, blocked you? Mm hmm And then she told every, like, all the guys that, like, I was crazy. And I was like, do you want me to, like, go off of the list of lies you told? She told so many lies constantly. Oh so God. I was like, what? So anyway, and then after that, I was like, this is literally crazy. Yeah. And then nobody believed her, so it was fine. But uh -huh. yeah, so that that was that. She tried to sabotage me, but it oh didn't work. Oh, my God. Oh, well, good for you. Reclaiming your power. That's like a reclaim power moment. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so after after this whole thing with Amanda, Samantha, honestly, I don't even know what name we're using, but I think the audience Wonderful. can follow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So what, like you said you did crazy things afterwards when you were like still partying. So like explain the story that we were getting to, but I was like, let's backtrack. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, you have to remind me. What's the story? making out story? Like, oh, so when I was like <laughs> at these high school parties, um, I came up with this game where I would first start asking guys like, oh, what would I have to do for you guys to like kiss on the cheek? And uh -huh. then they'd be like, mm, you have to kiss her on the lips. And uh -huh. I was like, okay. And then I would do that. And then I'd be like, what would it take for you to kiss each other on the lips? Uh -huh. And then they would like name their price basically. Yeah. And it would go on until <laughs> <laughs> I told my friend this story and she was literally like, Bella, that's crazy because I was like I was just seeing how far I could get them to go so I was uh -huh. just doing crazy things with my friend and we would just do yeah. whatever because we were on the same page we were just like we want to see them be little bitches you know <laughs> so we want to see how easy men are and they were I mean like we were like besties it was nothing for us yeah. for them it was like such a big deal to be like making out with this dude or like whatever <laughs> was this like in the middle of the party so like everyone could see them making out no they would always like I mean, maybe some of them, but, like, yeah. a lot of the times they would be, like, let's go in a different room. So, like, what was the furthest, like, you got them to do? Oh, my God. Not even that far. Because they would want me to do, like, crazy stuff if yeah. I wanted them. But, like, I would make them, like, touch each other's, like, but with jeans on or, yeah. like, whatever, <laughs> like, with pants on. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that was the furthest. 
sad to say I wish I wish it was more but I would have to do crazy things because obviously they were like nah dude <laughs> yeah you know what's funny is like I had all the signs that I was by in high school because I would like make out with girls but at the time I thought I was making out with girls for guys attention but all I had to do was pop a titty for a guy's attention I just think I wanted to make out with girls right <laughs> and <laughs> oh my god but at the time, I think it was so conditioned. Like, why else would you make out with a girl unless it's, like, for attention? So I'm like, I'm doing this for attention. And then I would kind of get a little tingly feeling in my vagina. And I'm like, oh, maybe I like this. Oh, my God. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you That's think this? so interesting. Like, <laughs> making out with girls. One time, one of my friends actually has, like, never made out with a girl. And I was like, are you joking? She yeah. was like, no. And I'm like, why <laughs> like what why? do you mean you don't do it when you're drunk she's like no i don't feel the need i was like what that's how you know like if you're on the like the bisexual scale i think because there's like you know there's a spectrum and like the spectrum goes from like all the way gay to like gay to like bi like you favor women more or like you're on like the other side of the bi spectrum where you favor men more but like you also think women are really attractive and like mm -hmm. if you like to kiss girls when you're drunk you're like like a, I think you're a little on the spectrum. Like I don't want to like put words in other people's mouths, but right. you're probably on the spectrum. Right? No, for <laughs> real. Like literally thinking about how like sometimes I would even like go in another room and I'm like, we're gonna tell them we did it, so it's like gonna be really cool. But Was, like, were you really, a virgin still then? Um, when when you were like doing these little games with guys. Probably. Wow. You were a so. devious little missy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. You know what? I wasn't. I think at that point I was like, well, I was 17, 18, and I had my first boyfriend when I was like 17. So okay. possibly, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I wanted to get in their heads. I just saw how much it like Cause you, made them crazy. You probably, just like hearing the stories from before, like you realized your power super soon on. Like oh, yeah. you can use and manipulate men to like get what you want. Not even like you were doing it. But, like, you saw what you could get and what you could do. You you kind of let the power get to your head a little bit. You were like, oh, yeah. Just... <laughs> no, there was a time where I really needed to be humbled because I was just getting – I was getting way too much in one life. And then I would, like, go home and I would expect it to, like, always be the same. Yeah. But really I was just like, you need to tone it down, Bella. We know you can get everything. But, like, you don't always need to get everything just because you can, Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I had I had to have a humbling moment. Oh yeah, <laughs> what was the humbling moment? Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. Well, even the other day, I was talking to my friends about high school, and they were like, "You don't have any pictures that you just like cringe at," and I'm like, "Not really." Uh -huh. And they're like, "What about outfits?" And I'm like, "No, I had really cute outfits." They're like, "You need a humbling. Like this is not <laughs> normal." Because I like literally from so young, I just always was like. I literally know I'm a hot pitch because they, like, always tell me. But the humbling yeah. moment, mm, Did you even have one? I don't think I had one. I just had... I just gained introspection. Like, I was able to be like, okay, that's not right. You can't just, like, yeah. use your power. Whatever. Because it was, like... I mean, that's probably more your ego versus, like, your authentic self. So then when you're, like, getting in tune with yourself, you're like, oh, oh, maybe this doesn't, like, feel very good. Yeah. <laughs> to, like, do this. Um, so you said you had, like, kind of, like, a Gossip Girl-esque, like, experience of just, like, partying. Do you have any other, like, crazy stories from, like, when you were 18 and a little legal... <laughs> To going oh because of like you know I was meeting so many people and whatever I would get like these guys um, I met this one guy and this is like the best thing ever too he's just uh -huh. so fun and cool and he doesn't flirt with me and he invites me everywhere so he literally takes me on trips for free and like he pays for everything no problem uh -huh. so I feel like that's probably the best situation that's come out of it other than the connections I've made because I've made really amazing connections yeah which really makes a life here in LA when you have those connections you have oh, yeah. a lot of you know bargaining bargaining power uh -huh. and it's like you can have a really fun life if you know really good people so I think those are like the really the really cool things because I would just like get to go with them everywhere and yeah like, they would just take me and we were just like fly and I was like whoa what? Free. yeah <laughs> Um, when did you start getting into like YouTube and stuff like that? 
Um, I started getting into YouTube when uh, I was oh like... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Um, I started getting into YouTube when I was like 18 years old, like actually filming YouTube videos. Uh huh. And were you always on other people's channels or were you like making your own? No, I've always been on other people's channels, never my own. Uh huh. Um, but I honestly really want to make one soon because people have always told me I should make one. Yeah, you probably should. Like Mm -hmm. with all the exposure you have. I know. I don't know why I don't. I guess like for so long, I thought I wasn't that creative. But yeah. now that I'm, like, exploring that side, I'm, like, uh-huh. I'm able to do that. So I think maybe I'm going to start a, like, whole new side for my, like, Instagram and stuff. Yeah, that'd be so fun. Right? Um, so being in L.A., I mean, there was this crazy bitch. Well, this, <laughs> there's a crazy bitch you dealt with. But oh, yeah. do you feel like, like, when you started YouTube and maybe, like, started getting bigger and stuff like that, like, how did you deal with a lot of people trying to either, like, exploit you, especially from learning from your experience with her? Like, how did you learn and, like, how did you navigate through L.A.? Because it's hard, even in the OnlyFans space, like, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, basically, it's really hard for me because I, like, always want to believe the good in people. So I, like, never want to, like, believe they're taking advantage of me. Yeah. So it's a little difficult, even for me, being here for so long. Um, but what I find is the m- I get literally so many, like, business opportunities now because they, like, want to use what they know I have now, you know? So they're yeah. like, you should invest in this for me. And I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> so, like, it, yeah, it just happens all the time. D- does that happen to you, too? No, uh, I guess I have, like, one friend, but he's actually still my pretty good friend, and he always comes to me with, like, investment opportunities, and I'm like, mm. no. I don't, like, no. A lot of them are illegal. No. <laughs> He's like, let's yeah. make a shrooms business together. I'm like, I'll get arrested, man. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> there was, like, this person who messaged me about NFTs, and they were like, oh, my God, we'll pay you this, like, crazy price. And I was you like, You always know that's what? too good to be true, and it's a crazy price. And I was like, wait, what? And then they kept going with it, and this one was just so disrespectful. I was like, what? They literally showed me how much they were going to make off of me and how much they were going to give me. And they were going to give me like a tenth of what they were profiting. Uh I was like, no, you're going to make me use my followers to make you money? Absolutely (laughs) not. Like, no, unless it's like that, you know. Yeah. So I get those like all the time where they're just trying to like get more out of me than what I would get out of it. Uh Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. What about like... When you meet girls and stuff like that, like, has it been hard to, like, form long-term relationships? Like, do you have trust issues now with women and men? Like, Oh, my God. I don't have trust issues with women at all. I trust yeah. women with my whole being. Um, but I... I'm sorry, what was the first question? I like, do you have trust issues with, like, women or men after, like, everything you've been through? Oh, oh, you were also talking about, um, you said making connections, like making oh, like, yeah, yeah. relationships. I feel like because we were moving around for so long and because of the people I'm surrounded by, mm-hmm. I don't really meet genuine people. Um, and so I haven't had a lot of luck in making like actual good friends. Like I probably yeah. have, I have thousands of people on my contact list, but the people I can actually go watch a movie with like in my house is like two oh. <laughs> like really little because I always like try to put myself out there yeah but a lot of people so I guess I do kind of have trust issues with women because they just like well in LA it's always like oh my god like you're so pretty let's hang out and then yeah. they like never hit you up again or like you'll message them and it's like seen like yeah. five minutes ago and you're like oh okay did I not have enough followers do we not have enough mutuals like for real like I literally this girl was like we should hang out gave me her Instagram I messaged her she left me on scene so then I messaged her again and I was like did you want to do the plans that we we literally like made plans that night and I was like did you want to still do them 
She just left me on scene. I'm like, why did we make plans if you're just going to leave me on scene? Like, uh-huh. you don't have to lie. You don't have to be fake to me. Like, I just don't need that from you. Yeah. If you're not willing to, like, actually be real about it, I don't care. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Um, well, how do you think you have, like, grown as a person? Because from the time I've met you, you started therapy. Mm-hmm. Now you're exploring yourself a little more. So, like, where do you see, like, the growth? And, like, where do you think other people should try exploring their growth? from like what you've learned oh my god I honestly see have seen the most growth just from spending time by myself and like really making sure I'm making it like a quality time with Mm -hmm. myself um and that has helped me tremendously because before like I was always such a busy bee doing so much business you know opportunities whatever that I like never focused on me and that's like helped so much I'm like so much calmer I have like no anxiety wow it's like so nice like it's been amazing so I would recommend starting there first is like just making sure you have new things to try and like do it yourself you know Mm -hmm. okay so things for people to try like ice skating yeah like I'm literally trying a million things so like I'm Mm -hmm. going surfing with my friend for the first time next week and then I'm like gonna do ice skating and then like I really want to go fishing and I'm just trying to like Anything I can think of, yeah. I'm just going to go do it because I'm in my 20s. I'm like, I have the time. And it, like, is so cute finding a new thing that you're just excited about, uh-huh. you know? Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Um, well, do you have, like, anything else you want to tell people? Do you have anything else you want to get out there? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm good. Okay, plug yourself. Okay, my Instagram is D G A F Bella. Um, Wait, and you don't you don't say D Gaff? Oh, some people say D Gaff. I just like to say D G A F because <laughs> okay. people sometimes like don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, and then my website is dgafbella.com. Subscribe to our OnlyFans. Yay! Mine is, uh, it's deals.com, and that just has all my websites there. Thanks. Thanks.